Hello, this is Andy Gase and it's April the 2nd. This is not April Fool's Day. This is the real data about COVID. Oh, sorry, I'm a European. I have to make a joke about that. So uh, let's get a quick update. So there's two videos. This is my first one. We're going to talk about the third wave, which unfortunately is happening. Uh, it's clearly really bad in uh, Europe, India, and Brazil. Uh, but the US is showing a bouncing back. And so we'll spend a bit of a deep dive on that. The good news, it's really a race between the vaccination. We now have 30% of Americans who have got one dose versus the variants. Uh, and so uh, we'll talk about that. And on the second video, on the clinical video, uh, there's a lot of new information on the variants, uh, long COVID uh, publication have come out and some vaccine updates. So you don't want to miss that. So let's take a look at what's going on. The roller coaster is back. I mean, look at this. It's, you can get rid of this thing. So Europe, you can see, is bouncing straight back up. Uh, we're gonna look in some countries there. South America, unfortunately, is going up. And, and as a result of that, the world is going back up. And of course, the US is backing up too. So not as bad as Europe and South America. So the vaccine is really helping here. So we talked about two weeks ago that the history of, this, of these viruses, they have three waves. You have the first little wave that we had last spring, the big wave in the winter, and this is the third wave that we seems to be going through. So not a surprise, this happened in 1918, 1919, and in the H1N1 that was in 2009, 2010. So I think we're going for the same thing. What we don't want is a wave like happened here. Uh, we need to keep that wave as low as possible. On the worldwide basis, as a result of that, we are going back up. This was really driven by the US going down. And now you can see that we unfortunately are going back up in the number of cases. And Brazil now is back to number two. And it looks like India may be passing us in the number of daily cases. Uh, overall, this is the bad news. This was going down and now it's going back up at 29% uh, rate in the last two weeks. And as a result of that, you have the mortality going back up again. Uh, you can see the three leading countries in the world is US, Brazil, and India with a very high rate, but we're gonna spend more time on France, uh, which is having a huge surge. So uh, if you look here, you can see the US had this huge spike during the winter, but now we're going back up, but not India. If you can see it coming there in that purple color there, in the number of daily cases is passing us. Uh, it will probably pass us uh, more next week. Brazil, unfortunately, never really went down. It continuously climbed steady up. And that is, of course, some of the P1 variants that we have discussed in the past. If you do this on a normalized basis, just because each of these countries have different population there, and if you look at the number of daily cases on a per million basis using a seven day average, so you don't have you know, things all over the places, you can see that we have plateau and have a little of that bounce back, but France has just exploded again, and so has Italy and Brazil. So uh, it's a lesson for us to learn because, you know, historically, Europe is, as you can see, historically has been three to four months before we are. So we don't want to follow, uh, you know, their curves. Uh, South America, Chile, Brazil, and Peru, all of them are going back straight up. And some of them are higher than they have ever been. Brazil is higher than ever, uh, which is scary since we know Brazil was really hit really hard there. And you can see Chile is also at the level it was during the worst time uh, in the late spring of last year. Mexico is somehow under control. Uh, quite interesting there. Uh, on the normalized deaths per thousand, uh, this is where we see the pain. Uh, this is the, 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 the daily on the seven day average and Brazil is now leading uh, in the world. Uh, United Kingdom and US who are leading in vaccination, you can see have a direct impact because they vaccinate a very high percentage of the elderly population there. That's why we have a lower mortality rate. Unfortunately, Italy has a rebound also. <clears throat> so the hotspot in the world, Brazil. Brazil had a bit of a down there and then went straight back up and never slowed down. They never had that drop that we had in, in the early spring. They're going steady up. And that's a worrisome because they have that P1 variant that is, is escaping the antibodies and is also uh, decreasing the effectiveness of the vaccines. That P1 variant is in the US, in particular in Santa Clara here in California. So, uh, so we want to really keep an eye on what's going on in Brazil. And unfortunately, it's going to be really, really bad news there. India, this is recent there. I India has this huge upsurge there. Now, there's still uh, uh, a small percent of their population there, but you know, the, you know it, that, that rate of progression there is a bit alarming. 
Uh, this is a graphic that was done by The Economist and it really shows that one of the things you see the difference between certain countries and others is the rate of vaccination right now is being driven by countries that have what's called advanced economies, i.e. they could afford to buy the vaccines and to uh, put together a system in place to do the distribution. Israel, as you know, has pretty much vaccinated the whole population with at least one dose and the UK is at over 50% and the US uh, uh, is also doing great. This is the problem there. If the emerging and developing economies have no vaccine, the virus will continue to mutate in this population and will come back via airplanes and other means to haunt us. And so, so it's not just vaccinating the US. We have to basically decrease the uh, infection uh, in, in, especially in areas there like South Africa, we have a lot of H1 HIV patients there, so the virus stays in the body longer period of time than the seven to 10 days and mutates, and then you have this nasty variance that comes back in others. So uh, you can see on a cumulative basis there, Israel has done an incredible job. Um, they pay a premium to get access to the Pfizer vaccine in exchange of sharing data, which they've done a great job at. So at least 100%, close to 100% of the population have at least received one dose. Uh, UK is ahead of the US and European Union is, at, is around 10 to 11% average. And that's gonna be a problem that just that explains why they're having a problem where the variants, the B117 from the UK is taking over the continent uh, and is creating that new wave that we're seeing. And you can see that wave is bouncing straight back up there. And so let's take a deeper dive. France is having an upsurge. They have, not, they have announced a national lockdown for four weeks. Uh, and Poland is having a surge and now higher than what they had ever had before. If you look at other countries, you see Poland and France, Netherlands, Italy, and Germany all have upsurge. And this is a serious surge. I mean, Poland is at the level uh, higher than it was during the, 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 the winter, the winter surge that we had there. And, and so, so that's something that is an issue because they've always been infected with B117, which was the original UK mutation there. That's two times more infectious, but also is, has a higher mortality rate and severity rate. And clearly the race of the vaccination versus the, versus the mutant is what we see in Europe. As a result of that, uh, France is in a national lockdown. Uh, uh, over 44% of the patients in the ICU are less than 65 years old. The, the patients now that are being hospitalized are the younger population there because uh, thankfully a lot of the older population has at least received one dose. But the problem that France is that only 11% have received one dose. Most of them have been relying on AstraZeneca, which we'll talk in the second video, has had some issues with blood clot and concern. So the total vaccination worldwide is astonishing. We're doing uh, over 10 million uh, doses per day. Over 8% of the world population has at least one dose. 600 million doses have been given in the last few months, led by the US with 156, 153 million doses, China at uh, 126, and India at 68, but they have a big population there, so it's a small percentage. So if we look at by continent there, in North America, which is the US and Canada, have vaccinated around at least 29% of the population have received at least one dose. Uh, well, Europe, as you can see, is a combination of the UK, which is close to 45%, and the continent, which is around 11%. That's why you have that weird average there. This is the problem there. We need to help these other countries and the rest of the world to get vaccinated. This is not just something that will stop at the border. Uh, an interesting graphic here shows the percent. This is a logarithmic scale. If you can see, this is 100%, this is 1%, this is 10% of the population there. A lot of the countries uh, who have high income have, have been able to purchase this vaccine and, and they're starting to do the distribution of it. The problem is that we're gonna have to deal with all those countries here. Most of them have absolutely no doses like in Africa and Asia. So this is a worldwide effort that we have to do. So on the cumulative vaccination per 100 people there, Israel, as I talked about, you know, at least 60% of the population has, been, uh, has had at least one dose. Uh, the UK is doing incredibly well with 46%. They've been pushing AstraZeneca. And this is the problem of Europe. Europe, you can see on the continent is between 11 to 12%. That's why we have that B117 that has exploded and is somehow being controlled by the UK because they've been vaccinating so fast. So the race uh, is really uh, fascinating to watch. Um, and the US is around 30% of the population have at least received one dose, which is also incredible in the last two months. So Moderna and Pfizer are the dominant uh, vaccines. Uh, Pfizer seems to be a little bit ahead, but you can see that Johnson & Johnson is slowly cramping up. 
And as you probably saw the news, unfortunately just lost a 15 million doses batch last week due to an error by one of their contractors. So that may slow down some of the availability in the US for the next few months. US metrics, unfortunately are not good. You remember we're going down, down, down. Well, guess what? We're going back up again. This is the this is a this is a the guacamole. Uh, we have gone up twenty percent in the last two weeks since I talked to you, and and, and uh, we're still having the drop in mortality rate because remember there's a three to four weeks delay. Uh, to give you an idea, a few weeks ago the bottom we hit was thirty five thousand cases per day, which is still a lot of people there. We now have pretty much doubled that. And we're still at the level of the summer peak. Remember, we all complained this was a catastrophe in the summer. We are basically bouncing at that level. That is still too high. We, we absolutely need to control uh, this, and especially because the variants you're going to see uh, are progressing in the US. So hotspots, Michigan. Michigan is the worst right now. Unfortunately, New York, New Jersey will spend a bit of time in that area and part of Arizona uh, are bouncing back up. Uh, what are the causes? The spring break this week will probably make things significantly worse. There's a lot of people on the beaches without any protection. We have an increase of the virus spread in younger people. So they are more asymptomatic. So they spread it uh, faster. The air travel is up to 1.5 million passengers per day, which is close to the booking level pre-COVID. And so as a result of that, the transmission uh, is happening across the country there. In addition to that, several states are relaxing their mandate and, and it's perceived by the head of the CDC and Dr. Fauci that this is going too fast and they're really urging people uh, to keep some of the distance and the mask mandate. As a result of that, you'll see Michigan is having a huge surge in the younger population between 10 to 19 years old. Uh, Vermont has had one of the worst days of new cases and New Hampshire has had an increase in positivity rate. I have a few slides coming up on that. So you look at the uptick, I mean, it's still not bad, but here's the worry there. We are back to most of those patients in the Northeast don't have antibodies if they didn't get the vaccine yet because the antibodies don't last a year. And that's when they had that big surge last spring. And then you can see Michigan is really red uh, and a very high case load there. So the whole you know, uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area there is at risk, so please be safe. So Michigan, the outbreak is, you can see pretty, pretty high. Uh, you, you can see when up 123%, so more than double in the last two weeks. And the level here is pretty much getting close to the level it had during the peak of the last winter there. So we absolutely need to control Michigan. Uh, because these are pretty high rate. And it's clearly Flint, Detroit, that big urban center area there that seems to be driving it. In Wisconsin is another area there where they basically, the Supreme Court has overridden the, um, the governor's mask mandate. And although it is still at the low base, you can see we already have an uptick of 22%. Uh, it's still low, but you know we, we want to control that. So ho hopefully people will still be careful and wear a mask. In New Jersey, uh, we are having a 22% change in the last two weeks. So these are not, you know, you can see that ramping up there is very is continuous and progressive there. We're not at the peak uh, of, of January there, but we are above the level of last spring. So these are high rate hospitalization, all of that is gonna be an issue. Uh, New York, same thing, yeah, it's a bit of a tick there. We have to see which way it goes after uh, the reporting there, but it's a 21% uh, increase on a 14 day basis there. Uh, pretty much Manhattan uh, is, is the, the purple area there to, to be worried about. So uh, on the good news side, the, the test positivity rates continues to improve. This is like a month ago. You can still see a month ago, we had a lot of reds, especially in Texas. Things have really come down. We want to see green. We want to see dark green. Vaccination is astonishing. Uh, uh, we have had 200 million doses delivered, 157 million have been injected. 53% of the elderly population over 50, 65 years old have been vaccinated, fully vaccinated. 75% have at least got one vaccine. And remember, 12 days after your first dose, you get 84% protection with the mRNAs. And, and uh, 14 days after the second dose, you get around uh, 95%. So, so that's why we're going to continue to see the mortality rate going down for that population there. And this is, I think, why we are and not having the bonds like Europe has because 30% of the population that has at least received one dose. So we're trying to slow down uh, the infection bouncing from the variants. 
Uh, we are now peaking at 3 million doses per day. Remember, we're all excited down here, there in January, early January there, where we could barely get any vaccination there. So we have to give credit to the CVS and all the states and the local district there to really have ramping up on a massive scale in a matter of a couple of months, the vaccination there. So this is a massive effort from the, the health uh, and human uh, services. So state of vaccination eligibility uh, is improving to the younger and younger population there. You can see that uh, we pretty much, uh, everybody now has moved from the 65 and up to the 50 and up and even some area there. It's expected in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that's what uh, President Biden is announcing that pretty much everybody by the end of uh, April should be able to get access to a vaccine. That's the good news. The bad news, you still have to figure out on the website where to get it. And, you know, that, and that's unfortunately still a, a challenge state by state. So community transmission by county is improving. Dark red is the area there where you have a transmission. But still, I want to remind you, this is still a lot of redness there in the Florida and the Northeast area there. So please be careful there. The virus is in the community and still very active. And so you could still get exposed if you're not fully vaccinated. The dashboard, California is doing fantastic. Look how low they got. I mean, they're really low. I mean, compared to the other states where most of the country there is at the level of last summer there, which is much higher. We have really dropped uh, the cases in California to less than 1.8% positivity rate. So that, that's extremely good news. And as a result of that, you can see the transmission has dropped, but here's the interesting part. The area that are still high is more in the country area there, which is the Modesto and close to the Mexican border there uh, uh, between Arizona and Mexico there. So there's still some hot pockets there, which are more in the urban area. Uh, the area that was really hot, which was the San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles have really calmed down drastically. So stay positive, wear a mask and get vaccinated. And, and please watch my second video, uh, which is gonna be a clinical update on the, on, the, on the variants there. And you don't want to miss that because unfortunately the variants are on the way straight back up in the US and they're more dangerous.